Greetings to all off-road themed fans on my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to show you how three legendary Japanese off-road vehicles will deal with a series of different ground obstacles. Mitsubishi Pajero or Montero, named depending on the country you live in. This model is presented by the third generation, equipped with 3 liter V6 petrol engine, automatic transmission, and all-wheel drive system without rear differential lock. As an upgrade, this car has a 2 inch suspension lift. The tires are Bridgestone Dueler. And this is not a standard Land Cruiser. Its manufacturer's production code is 205. The car has a 4 liter V6 petrol engine, manual gearbox, and besides central differential lock, this Toyota is equipped with stock rear locking differential. This car does not have electronic off-road assistance systems, which are present in standard Land Cruisers. This TLC has got several serious off-road upgrades such as off-road metal front and rear bumpers, rock sliders, power winch, snorkel, protective cover of the body, suspension lift, and oversized wheels with Goodyear Wrangler Duratec all-terrain tires. The third participant is a Nissan Patrol Y60 with a powerful 4.2 liter turbo diesel engine. Same as Land Cruiser, this Patrol has a good off-road turning package. Metal bumpers and rock sliders, snorkel, ARB suspension lift, and big 33 inch Toyota Open Country MT wheels. Now when you're familiar with all the cars of this video, you can mark your favorite one in the voting in the upper right corner of the screen. But before we proceed to our obstacles, I want to show you what's going to be in the next video. And in the next video, you'll watch the epic contest for the title of the King of the Hill, with the participation of Mercedes-Benz G63, AMG, Land Rover Discovery 4, Toyota Tundra, and Land Cruiser Prado, and Lexus LX470. Therefore, please subscribe on my channel and immediately press the bell to not miss the new video. And now get comfortable, because here we go. We start with the first obstacle, Diagonal suspension with a quite difficult height difference. Mitsubishi goes first in the standard mode of the AWD system. As soon as the car pushed against the slope with the right front wheel and the unloaded left front wheel slipped a little, the electronic imitation of the inner wheel lock interfered immediately. As a result, Mitsubishi climbed the obstacle on three wheels and conquered it. Here, I want to draw your attention to the huge rear overhang of the Mitsubishi. That's why the car slightly touched the ground with the left side of the rear bumper. Now let's see how Toyota Land Cruiser performs on the same obstacle. Four-wheel drive system of the car is in default mode. Let me remind you that this car does not have electronic imitations of the inner wheel locks. The front right wheel pushes a slope, and at the time, the unloaded front left wheel slopes helplessly. Even an attempt to change the trajectory did not change the situation. And now the driver has activated the low gear and the locked rear differential. Even after the full stop with the unloaded front left wheel due to the activated rear inner wheel lock, the cruiser moved on with confidence. And this is a trace on the ground remaining from the rear bumper of Toyota Land Cruiser. Now it's Nissan Patrol's turn. The car does not have any electronic locking imitation systems, and the first attempt is made in default all-wheel drive mode, that is, without activating the low gear and locks. The situation repeats the one with the Land Cruiser. Unloaded wheels scroll helplessly and the car can't move forward. The driver tried to conquer the obstacle by taking a small acceleration, but this attempt was unsuccessful too. It's the right time to activate the rear lock. And here's what we expected. The rear lock allows driving through the diagonal suspension even when moving on three wheels. And a bonus is a demonstration of the benefits of having a heavy-duty off-road bumper. Of course, this can also be done with a stock plastic bumper, but there is a high probability that afterwards, it will have to be scrapped or become very expensive to repair. The next obstacle is a long climb with stones of various sizes throughout the entire distance. The first to go is Mitsubishi, with center differential lock and low gear activated. Thanks to electronic imitation of interwheel locks and judging on Pajero's drive, one might think that this obstacle is not particularly difficult. But let's not rush to conclusions. The driver of the Toyota Land Cruiser decides to pass this obstacle in a default all-wheel drive mode without activating the locks. Having reached the middle of the distance, he drove in a small diagonal suspension, so the unloaded rear left wheel helplessly throws the soil out of the contact spot. The car could not move further from this position. Now the low gear is activated. Let's see how the Land Cruiser goes on this mode. In fact, the low gear does not solve the 
problem of diagonal suspensions, but it provides more torque at lower speeds. As you can see, it is very difficult for the Land Cruiser to drive in such conditions without the rear differential lock, but due to the suspension travel and a huge power reserve, the car overcomes this obstacle. Just like the previous participant, Control drives in a default all-wheel drive mode and plus low gear. Patrol reached a place where the Land Cruiser hanged out and could not move further, and using the higher torque of the turbo diesel engine and aggressive mud tire tread, Nissan continues to conquer the climb, throwing out dust clouds. And now, the driver has activated the rear differential lock. At this point, both Land Cruiser and Patrol with their rear locks off, hung out their wheels and actively skidded. And now we see smooth and confident climbing. That's what the differential lock means. Well, or electronic imitations too, because Mitsubishi did an excellent job with this obstacle. And now this is a test for geometric cross-country ability and, by tradition, Mitsubishi will pioneer it. The obstacle consists of two parts. First, a steep descent, and then no less abrupt climb. And in order to minimize the likelihood of contact of body parts with the ground, cars will be forced to travel by diagonal, hanging the unloaded wheels out. Electronic imitation of locks easily copes with this task. But the long rear overhang again reminded of itself with a powerful soundtrack. As a result, Mitsubishi easily drove on a rocky climb, about the same as we saw in the previous test. Therefore, I won't focus on it. Let's see how the rest of the cars drove a steep descent and a steep climb. The Land Cruiser rides a default four-wheel drive mode. There are no problems on the descent, but on the ascents, the diagonally suspended wheels skid helplessly. The suspension travel is not enough to provide the necessary contact of the wheels for forward movement. Even an attempt to take a small acceleration was unsuccessful. Then the driver locks the rear differential. The diagonal suspension is no longer a problem, though the heavy weight of the car still is. Therefore, at the exit of the ditch, the cruiser is actively skidding in an attempt to drag its large body up the loose hill. After disabling the rear lock, Toyota easily climbed the rocky slope. Nissan Patrol rides in normal four-wheel drive mode, and there is no problem with the descent. On the uphill, the patrol takes a small acceleration and overcomes diagonal suspensions, hits the ground with the hitch, and with a minor wheel slip on the top, easily copes with this obstacle. Before summarizing the passage of three obstacles with three SUVs, Let's watch the crossing of the water obstacle performed by a magnificent trinity. The first is the patrol. Then goes Toyota Land Cruiser. And for dessert, I left the passage performed by Mitsubishi, a close attention to the front number plate. Now it's in place, the car rides a high wave in front of itself, and now the number plate seems to be gone. Fortunately, one mount of the plate turned out to be more wave resistant, and the number plate wasn't washed off completely. For patrol and the Land Cruiser, which were equipped with a snorkel, such water procedures were absolutely safe. But in the case of Mitsubishi, in addition to the number plate, the front right wheel arch liner flew off, and water got into the air filter housing. Fortunately, there was nothing wrong with that. The car returned to the city on its own. Well, now it's time to announce the results of the test. Mitsubishi Pajero or Montero. Electronic wheel locking imitations allow the inexperienced driver to drive through rather difficult sections and obstacles. But there is a flip side to the coin. The driver cannot fully control the electronic assistance, rephrasing the famous saying. It makes that driver assumes with the electronics disposed. On the other hand, Perhaps the inexperienced driver won't need one, but an advanced user can always install an aftermarket rear diff lock. 
but with a long rear overhang, nothing can be done. I remind you that this car was a higher ground clearance than the stock version. And even with the lift, it touched the ground with a rear bumper in two tests out of three. So the solution is to replace it with an off-road bumper if you plan to frequently drive in complex terrain. The lift and larger diameter wheels will also have a positive effect on the geometric cross-country capabilities. Toyota Land Cruiser and Nissan Patrol showed approximately the same results. Despite the good off-road tuning, both of them could not overcome the relatively simple obstacle smoothly at low speed without activating the rear differential lock. Although most stock Mitsubishi with electronic imitations easily coped without any additional action from the driver. But one shouldn't think that electronic imitation is a panacea for all occasions. I already shot a video with a standard Toyota Land Cruiser 200 without the rear differential lock and it was very clearly visible that there's a certain limit of electronic imitations assistance, and at some point, those cease to be effective. This video will be on the channel soon, so don't forget to subscribe. Here are the conclusions. The capabilities of electronic imitations will suffice for most situations in which the ordinary owner of an SUV might find themselves. But for those who purposefully go out there where ordinary people are likely afraid to go, they might need the mechanical inner wheel lock, and preferably not only on the rear axle. That's all for me. Dios was with you. Be sure to write me in the comments about which SUV comparisons you'd like to watch on my channel. See ya in the next video.